This is where it's going to get crazy. I feel like it's going to get nuts. I swear it's Nicole Kidman. I can't prove it, <laughs> but I swear. You open the jar and you're like, need a new it's jar. Gone. Yeah. You're it's like, just, yeah. Come back. Welcome back to a new segment, Flashback or Blow. Yeah. <laughs> When she tried to bite that woman's finger, she goes, you would eat it, you fat bitch. <laughs> you would try and eat my finger, you fat bitch. <sighs> There's Girl. always someone chapping my ass. Yeah. Always I love saying that. That really my chaps ass. my ass. Yeah. I don't know if it was a New York thing, but my mom growing up always used to, like, whenever she would, like, stub her toe or something, she'd be like, your mother's ass. <laughs> I don't know if that's, like, a universal thing or... She was also orgasming on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is not taken out of context totally. either. No. Yes, that is verbatim <laughs> what happened. What are we doing today? Well, today we are... Well, we're just being mean. We're going to be so mean. Mean. Yes. We're not being mean. We are reacting to some of the biggest... Well, I should say we're counting down the biggest celebrity makeup fails. Now, in listen, our opinion. In our opinion. That's my opinion! <laughs> I have to say, we've all had makeup fails. I've had makeup fails. I've you guys love fails to point out Kevin's podcast. makeup fails. <laughs> on this very podcast. Yeah. Yeah. If I laugh too hard, my foundation looks like it's a mustard yellow mm-hmm. versus my red neck. And let me tell you. Oh my God. It's so funny because it's like camera makeup is so different because you... <gasps> I don't want to talk about that's the what camera I mean. makeup. Now you know on camera you need to put your foundation down to your nipples because if you laugh, y- you get red and it shows through the... Yeah, it's, it, then p- it makes it look like it's not matching, but it's just because your neck is turning red because you're hyperventilating. <laughs> yes, because yeah. I'm losing oxygen when yes. I'm laughing that hard. So... Pick your poison. You want me to laugh or you want me to turn like two colors? Yeah, yeah. No, really. I'm a chameleon. (laughs) Thank you to everyone who was patient with Kevin while he learned the camera makeup. So So rude. Yes. We've all had makeup fails and this is not directed at the celebrities. No. This is their artist. Their artist did them dirty. And we're going to put a positive spin on it and also talk about like if we, like Fashion Week, we said if they sat down and they were like, we needed to fix the beauty school's uh, students' work. What would we do to fix it? What would we do in the sense of what would or, we do differently in general of what we would have done to like make sure this didn't happen this or look this way on camera. So, exactly. So we each picked five and we don't know who the others Yeah, picked. we don't know what we're about to go for. So let's, yeah. All right, let's, let's get into it. Close your eyes, Kevin. Okay. All right, we're going to dive Close. in because he doesn't know. Johnny's number five, Jennifer Lopez. I think the biggest thing is who did it. I know, I know. Yeah, we're always kind of. And, but yeah. this is what we're talking about. We're we're faulting the artist, not the, the not yes. the celebrity. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh my god. These Jennifer celebrities Lopez is stunning. They put so much trust in someone who, for years, and they're booked and busy. They sit down. Oh. Yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're doing a little shade to one of J Lo's makeup artists. You know what? Okay, let's just air out the dirty laundry. Yeah. This is my thing with Scott Barnes. I he's think not he's a good incredi- makeup artist. No, I think he's <laughs> incredibly talented, but he's just every time I hear him talk it's dripping with ego oh that there's this air about him that, like, i'm untouchable makeup. yes that I, I created I, underpainting everyone copies me everyone yeah. does this there's just right, so much right. humble bragging going on which is fine if we didn't have if it was good that's what i'm saying and then right. he'll finish and you're like hmm <laughs> where i'm like it doesn't quite match the yes level so we don't know if scott barnes did this one on j-lo he always gonna, does j-lo's makeup i'm gonna assume that is certainly an underpainted forehead it's so orange that it's just the contrast with the orange around the hairline and the super bright light way too light concealer and center of the face then we have this baby cinderella blue Under the eyes, over the eyes, with a dark wing liner, for some reason, going with this periwinkle, like, baby Cinderella blue, and no lips. And you know what also the issue is for me, too, is that the waterline was also tight line with the same same color so it all you know what this is giving to yeah i feel like i'm about to make so many references to her (laughs) in this video but it's giving gaga art pop when it was like the white mustache the white (laughs) eyes the white lashes the white hair you just took the words out of my mouth you do this thing or drag queens like bianca del rio you'll put the white underneath on the waterline and do the white uh, i'm sorry on the lash line and in the waterline and it gives the illusion that the eye is bigger than it is because you're basically making it more white since she is a medium complexion, this blue is doing that for her. It's literally making her look like her eyes are wider. But then you did this harsh, harsh black liner with no 
lips. Yeah, and it I, looks like there's still a little foundation on the rim of the lips. I see what they were trying to do too, like tying in the baby blue from what she was wearing that we could see on the yes. collar. When you're doing a celebrity that's going yes. to get photos taken, like someone hitting the red carpet and you do this often, you don't think to take a photo before with flash from 10 feet away, five feet away to make sure. Because you know what was always one of the most fascinating things when we needed to get certified at Sephora to do mm-hmm. makeovers? One of the like main bullets that you needed to do to pass and they didn't tell you this was when you were done you needed to go like almost walk 10 feet back and look at them from afar Mm. because you almost get like tunnel vision where when you're so up close you're seeing it from one perspective and then you step back and you're like whoa it's asymmetrical it's a totally yeah. di- exactly asymmetrical you too much saturation here yeah and that's where and this is my thing with celebrity makeup and this is an example we get too comfortable with doing makeup looks that we're like let's take a risk today let's do all powder baby blue around <laughs> the eyes inside the eyes yeah. little black liner no lashes just mascara for you you're gorgeous yes no lip you're gorgeous yes and, and then yeah we take take a flash photo and how I would have done this differently. Cause this is why this is only my number five. Cause she really, it's not that bad. It's really not bad. And if I've we're been, saying this now, Oh, I know. Wait till you see these other girl. Ones. So I would say not even mad at necessarily the all around blue and that liner, but she needs a, and I don't know if she has one on, but it ain't big enough. She needs a lash. A she lash. Needs a lash. Or you know what? If she does have a lash on, the liner's too big because it's mm. hiding the lash. So I would have did the liner a little smaller and I would have did a little bit more of a statement lash because that's the problem with this look. Nothing is the focal point. So it's just this like, it's giving this naked yeah, like, flatness. Yeah. Exactly. And I would even to even go off of what you're saying of adding a lash, I would warm up the crease a little bit. Yes. With bronzer. Yep. I would just warm it up, give a little bit more contrast. And honestly... And I'd I blend would take that forehead. Out, yeah, and oh, take out the blue liner and the waterline. I would maybe just do brown. Yes. To contrast the blue, I think yes. that's a beautiful contrast, like a, a yeah. soft brown. Yep. I wouldn't hate the lip. No. If, maybe if we had a little bit of lip liner, something. Yeah, something. Even a lip liner, just that was that's like her tone, and then of almost lip totally just, blend it out, like blend it into the fade it yeah. into the center. Mm-hmm. Don't apply it too heavy. Sometimes even in this case, like what I would, what I do is like I will take a lip brush and I will run it over the tip of my lip liner mm. and apply it with the brush because oh, then it's giving like diffused. it's giving 30% of the color opposed to sometimes you need to push so hard to get the pencil to get a clean line it ends mm. up becoming darker than you want it to so I'll take it That's a, a little idea. bit off with it and do that to anchor the edge of the lips yeah because her skin looks beautiful but it's just this is oh. a little a little, a little miss the mark. All right, so my number five, we have ready, open your eyes. Kelly Osborne. Oh my lord. So this was a little bit of a nod to me. <laughs> <laughs> This was Kevin on the premiere episode of Beautiful Woo! and Bothered. Oh yeah. my This God. was a little nod to me. <laughs> Talk about taking the piss out of yourself. Wow. <laughs> Holy I mean, shit. I know. I, can, I, I gotta know. laugh. I gotta laugh at myself. I know. It happens. And this is why I picked this one because it's not that bad. And it's just something that you you picked up. Well, and here's the thing. It's you, not that bad. You, so here's my thing too. I assume she had somebody do her makeup, but I also don't want to, because sometimes there are people yeah. like oh, that's true. Kelly Osborne who has grown yeah. up on the reality TV life of doing her own mm-hmm. makeup and then grew to do, got her makeup done yeah. saying like she grew to get her makeup done. I'm going to assume that someone did this. Yes. Now, this is where I fault them because sometimes celebrities or I, we've had clients that say, I want to go darker. And I'm like, well, it doesn't match your neck. Mm-hmm. So no. Yes. Now, I will say I have gotten a little courageous and maybe picked a color that Pushed was your limits. That was yeah. a little yellow for me. Yeah, yeah. And I tried to brighten it up with concealer. And then I come on here looking like the Babadook. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say first off, yeah. the things I like about this, I love the eyes. Love the eyes. Love the eyes. The lip, I actually like. And I'm almost curious, too, if this was a camera issue. Like, I wonder if she, because there's, she, no. there is no way she looked like that in the mirror. And said, 
Let's roll. Let's <laughs> let's do it. No, up. no. So you know what I'm saying? I wonder if like maybe the well, flash lighting, is making it flash yeah. and everything. And even you could tell too. Uh, right here, I'm gonna the center of yes, her neck. The she neck. has the yellow foundation coming down, but then nowhere uh-huh. else on the so neck. So the foundation is not on the neck. So you can literally tell they put one stripe. They were almost like going to blend it, and they did one stroke, and they were yes. like, oh, it probably looks good. Yeah. And also too, we have to. I always factor this in. And this is always the thing when I do someone's makeup or when I was doing it more like routinely, yeah. I would always be very cautious of my lighting because I said, yes, it looks good here. But when you go out yes. in lights, you're yes. like, Whoa. I know. And this so, is also too, I mean, you could tell not only is this too dark, it's way too olive because look how green mm. she looks. It's like giving like Oompa Loompa slash Wicked Witch of the West. Like yeah, because it really does look too green. It's green. It's not even like, it's almost like an orangey yellow green yeah. mix. So it is too olive, which I agree. And um, even if the foundation was okay, the lip, jail. I Really? I, I want love a darker that color. I, I want a darker I need lip contrast. Liner. Exactly. I, no, agreed. I I don't think the lip is when you're that pale and you're doing like Playboy Bunny pink. <gasps> it looks you might as well be concealer. You know, it's just oh, washed out. One hundred percent. I mean, I think that this is probably the eye and the lip. I like what they were going for, but yeah, I agree. I would absolutely take like a like a hot pink liner, like Mm -hmm. even with your technique of taking it with a lip brush, like you said, and then almost just giving it a little more of like a border and definition would be beautiful. The really, the only thing for me is the color of the foundation. Otherwise I think her blush looks beautifully applied. The The eyes are gorgeous. I think they're saturated. It really looks great. I have one more complaint. Sure. Her face shape. She has a very strong Mm. jaw. Uh huh. Do you see how underneath the blush and the, contour her jaw bone was clearly highlighted like with a powder or something yeah. to clean that up uh-huh. when you the wideness in that way like if your face is more square in that way obviously like from a makeup technique standpoint you don't have to but we're talking like technique wise and old school kind of whatever mm-hmm. application the goal was to always maybe like offset or oval to achieve the oval so that should not be that highlighted because it's highlighting how Mm. square her face is same with the chin Mm -hmm. and the foundation is clearly warping our perspective of whether she even has like bronze or contour on because it's just yellow from she might um, and it could be top to taint like so i like i love that there's no darkness on her forehead because she has a smaller forehead so you don't want to bring that lower Mm. but i think that's where you can really shave here and here the jawline and the chin with that cut, which I don't see any oh. in there, which I'm happy because it would have been worse on top of this foundation. So, and the foundation in her hair, in her hair. Oh yeah. Yeah. The foundation is in her hair. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's something. It's so crazy. Cause the eyes are so beautiful. Mm. Was this like, we spent too much time on the eyes and then we Maybe. had to like, you know, supermarket sweep the face. Like <laughs> yeah. really yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I've been there, but. And okay. let me say this, is this only me too? This was my attitude on white people. <laughs> when if I was torn, let's say even in bridal, like, cause I, I really never had like 50 foundations. I had a couple and I mixed. Mm. If I was unsure, I always went lighter because I can always add darkness with my Powder. bronzers and my contours and my you're adding everything else oh, you're was, putting on top is I was dark. notorious for taking if something was ever too light on somebody you know I would go in with a powder and yeah. like press and roll that over somebody and they would look airbrushed and it was their color and I'm like Thank you. Like I would yeah. <laughs> always rather be one shade lighter than yeah, one yeah, shade yeah, darker you can always, on light skin. Yes. Dark skin, it's going to look ashy. It can yeah. totally, that's, oh, that's a nightmare. You yeah. can't really. But on light skin, it's not going to look ashy. So I would always rather go 0.5 lighter and then warm it up and darken it and up with everything else. Deep and yeah, because once you add bronzer, and honestly, I feel this way, even if things claim to not oxidize. I feel mm. like foundation always looks darker. I always assume it's gonna. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is my number four. And I, this is a man. I threw a man in. We got to roast them. We're not okay. roasting him. We're roasting the makeup artist. But you know what I mean? Equal opportunity here. Ready? Yeah. Bradley Cooper. Ooky spooky. You got to blend bronzer. in the beard. You got to blend it in. Oh, he has full foundation on. You got to blend that, that in the beard. bronzer is the issue. Oh, yeah. Well, because not only did they just do the foundation, but they stopped. <gasps> Wait, look at his neckline. Yes. Yes. Wait, look at right here. Literally, they didn't put it on anywhere where his facial hair is. They didn't, whatever the complexion product is. Oh, it's, I'm, okay, as I'm looking at this and my eyes are adjusting. Look at that. I'm seeing it more in the, oh my God, what is it? It looks like self-tanner. They literally just did, they stopped right at the beard and went all over the face. Oh, and you know, so I'm going to point this out too. And look at his ears. I was... (laughs) 
people just about to say it. The goddamn ears. I am going to fucking scream. The amount of, Do you see yes. that? The that amount pink of pe- ear? Yeah. The amount of people in my tutorials long form when they ask me, like, they'll be in the comments and be like, why are you putting your foundation on your ears? When you are a pale bitch that turns red at the slightest of climate change or temperature change, you better foundation down those ears. And I am I will speak for myself, and I know this is probably the case too, when I'm wearing makeup and it's cold out, what gets red? My ears, ears. and my nose, bitch. Yes. I look like Rudolph, and then I have red ears, and I said, oh, my nose and my ears match, and now my foundation is too yellow, yeah. and I'm walking around looking like Boo Boo the Fool. Yes. I answered someone time in the comments, and I explained, I was like, oh, I put foundation on my ears because they like get red or whatever, and then comment back, and they were like, ew. They're like, how do you clean it? I'm like, so how do you bathe yourself and clean everything normally. If that, if the thought of putting foundation on your ears makes you say, ew, because you don't know how to properly clean it off, how are you cleaning them normally? That person doesn't wash their ass either. <laughs> like, that, that, like, that person doesn't wash their legs. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know those bitches. Yep. They oh, wash the I'm junk. Light-headed. They wash the ass. They wash the feet, and the legs go untouched. They said the soap rinse is down. Yeah. Oh my god, your ankles yeah. are caked in <laughs> sweat and regret. Yes. Long story short, yeah. foundation your ears if so, you're pale. But yeah, and also too for male grooming and everything, I've done. So I've actually done male grooming. And do you for remember like, the fashion week we did where? One Do of them. I remember? Girl. Okay, now let's not objectify them. But oh, we did. Yeah, let's. these fine gentlemen. We needed to put makeup Ladies on 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 on. Um, I'm gonna male models, male models, but and a lot of them were um, heterosexual. Yes, that have never put makeup on, nope. and they didn't want us to put makeup on. But oh, they really? were sent to the. Yeah, oh. you don't remember that? Oh, maybe no. I really didn't get any hesitation from people. Oh, I did. I got oh. two. I <laughs> got too specific that I remember their really? faces and there was always people that were like, Oh yeah, I've never done this, but I'm down. Like I'm a model. I do this, whatever. Yeah. They were fine. I got two people that were very like, I don't want makeup. And I'm like, I'm like, I actually like, I literally have, I have to, to. Like, they're, they're telling me I have to like, do this. We're creating. Lo- and I said, it's not, I'm not putting eyeliner on you. I'm yes. not doing mascara. We're like, false lashes. It was, yeah. and it was for that spring summer show yeah. that we did. And it was, they were like fully, like, I know, I know, I know. Perfected. Let but me I was say like, this. It was like we walked into the lineup of like Abercrombie wh- and Fitch. Bigger than that. It was like the ba- back backstage gay. Uh, it was like um, behind the scenes at like a gladiator thing. Yeah. Like these men were like Roman, like fight to the death gladiator in the we Coliseum. Were, we were, we were, we were in the behind the scenes of three hundred. <laughs> Literally, yeah, yeah, we were like, yeah, three hundred. Sparta, That's like, exactly kick me down like, the yeah, hole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of the guys, it like on his chest, his like giant peck that was as big as my head. He had a huge tattoo, and uh-huh. they told me to cover it. I was like uncaught because this guy's like straight, so I'm like t- literally like like around the nipple, just like trying to whatever. And he didn't think twice about it. That's what I mean. My guys were like fine or whatever, but it was oh, yeah. And then there was the ones that knew that yeah. they knew what they were gooning and baiting over <laughs> yeah. there. They were like they practically yeah, uh-huh. lit a cigarette and were like, "You're welcome." Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You'd be like, "You actually owe me money for this." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm letting you touch me. Uh-huh. But there was a, the amount of times that we were male grooming, and we had to make sure that it was so. Sc- Skillful that yes. it didn't look like makeup on camera, but they had to look uh, bronzed, perfected, but yes. in a way where when you look at traditional makeup on like red carpets, you could tell that they're bronzed and beautiful and it's yes. looking like makeup, but where men, it has to be perfect skin, Barbie-like plastic skin. Undetectable. Undetectable. And the amount of times body makeup, like you just said, covering tattoos when yes. they wanted like uh, putting bronzer on their abs and like mm-hmm. highlighting. And I was like, it can't take a flash photo and there was there was no time for us to take photos no. before to make sure it looked good. Yes. So I was like, yes. here's the hoping. Which is why, like, that's what I mean. Maybe I, I and we get, we can give a little bit of leeway to these makeup artists because maybe mm. they didn't have time either to take a flash photo. But I think over time, <sighs> if you're doing Bradley Cooper's makeup, like, there's certain things I know now in my head. I'm just yeah. like, I've been, we've been doing it for so long. If I'm putting any kind of face product on him like this, you better believe I'd be putting it on the beard. How do you miss it and forget the entire beard, the ears, the everything? And if you're going this much more bronze, you better be doing the back of his neck. You know I what I mean? I have a question for you. 
Yeah. Being that, like, we both have facial hair. Yes. Do you put makeup, when you do foundation, do you put it in your facial hair? Yes. I do too. Okay, because- I do it, and then, so it depends, because when I'm doing full beat, like Mm -hmm. glam, I will put it in my beard, and I don't do any brow gel or colored brow brow gel in my beard, because I don't mind that it makes my beard a little lighter, because it just almost makes it look a little blonder in a way. But when, right now, I have foundation all in my beard to bring the color back, I- my my tinted brow gel I also do in my beard to re-anchor mm. and bring the life back to the beard and especially for someone like him obviously this is preference a lot of this is preference what we're talking about you could do your makeup however you want live your life but someone like him let's say if you did want to give the appearance obviously Mr. Cooper was feeling his zhuzh and maybe wanted to be a little bit more tan you can make someone look a little like I have a little patch of gray here like little thing you can hide grays with a tinted brow gel and mm. make it look a little bit younger and things like like these are male grooming things that are just second nature to but me. We sh- I, I know how to fill in patches of a beard so that it looks completely undetectable. This is just this insane. is unforgivable yes. in the sense of like it looks like he did self tanner and avoided every patch yeah. of hair. He said skin only and then that was it. Like that's wild. And it stops weirdly under the ear but not enough under the ear where yeah. it's like right up to it. It's just yeah, this is ooh gosh. No ma'am. But yeah, the only honestly the fast fix of this is putting oh. it all over the facial hair and the yes. ears and he would be perfect. Oh, this is a quick fix in 2 seconds cuz what's applied is good. But yes, it's just agreed. and it looks undetectable. Whatever's yes, on him, whatever looks the foundation undetectable is, is, is amazing. Is incredible. Looks like his skin. And even up to his hairline, yes. like you don't even see it, which is beautiful. So totally. Great job. Okay, my number four. Ready to take a look? We have Miss <laughs> You wanna be on top? <laughs> you wanna be on top? Okay, uh Johnny's mom, go ahead and give us an yeah. orgasm. This this is what she looked like. That was the day. No, I'm kidding. You, <laughs> yeah. I was like, was it really? Yeah. She did that? So we have Miss Tyra Banks. Um so the reason why I have this at my number four, I will so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna preface this is that I don't think this is that bad bad and i saw an article where they said that this was not good makeup because are you ready for this why too much bronzer girl too much bronzer no where i don't think that is not the problem i don't think the bronzer is the issue no for me it is not the lip it is not the bronzer it is not the rest of the makeup besides this eye i get what they were going for almost like um almost like a very nars yeah high fashion makeup editorial it just was not doing it for me. Talk about cigarette ash. It is. And <laughs> yeah. then adding gold in there, thinking that's going to lighten and brighten it. No. So flash opinion of what I would do quickly to make this better. First off, I would take it off and start yes. over. Quite literally, just if start I was going to start over and I would do this, I understand what they were going because for. Because this is all going to be ruined. It's yep. they, they t- t- took that black to her hairline. Yep. So black base on the eye, set it with a black, blend it out. Soften out the crease with bronzer, Mm -hmm. gold lid, and then soften that in. Yeah. I would not go as heavy on the black under the eye. No. I would tight line with a black liner. Yes. And leave the gold underneath with a little bit of bronzer to add depth on under the eye. Completely. With a little bit of black in the outer corner smudged inward underneath. Um, the brows, I almost like I get why they didn't fill them in as much because the eyes are the focal point, which I'm not mad at. More of that high fashion brow. Mm-hmm. But then once the eye makeup is cleaned up, I would softly fill the brows in. Yes. And then set with a little bit of brow gel and yeah. be on your way. The lip, I actually really enjoy I with enjoy her skin lip. tone and her eye makeup. Yeah. Um, the bronzer is not the issue. But you know what, though? Because I'm going to say something controversial. Cover her lip with your finger. Okay. It makes the eyes a little better. Like, you know how there's always what should be mm. one focal point? It's okay. too much. Like, that is too different. Like, if I, if you showed me just her mouth with that Barbie lip, mm-hmm. I would expect a natural eye because that's really Almost bold. like I can almost see, like, an iridescent pink eye with, like, a soft yes. crease and just very, yeah. like... And then yeah. when I cover the lips, I mean, it's still, it's aggressive, but they are fighting each other on top of it. Which is mm. making them, and you're obviously mm-hmm. looking between the two. Let's mm. say, uh, you know, if only one can remain in the running to become America's next top model, it's the lip. So the, so like, you know what I mean? So Paris Hilton makes makeup. the eyes look worse. Well, Paris exactly. Hilton at the Met Gala had a very dark black smoky eye with that nude, nude lip. And lip. We loved it. Yes. So this is where it's two. They're fighting each yeah, other. Yeah, if we're gonna do, and I mean, this is a very artistic eye too. Yes. And I, I, I'm torn on. Not having a lash on, 
Um, I need a lash when like, you're doing eyes like this. Well, and I'm like, w- like I understand that we don't want to make the eyes look darker, but then at that point, it's like dial we, back the shadow. We clearly had to uh, yes. exactly. So then I'm like, did, was it a, a the quick prob- decision not to do a lash yes. because it was gonna? Because the problem too with doing this almost like faux bleached brow is then to do no lashes too. It's all this black, but it looks like you just smudged this black on like a naked baby eye with no hair. You yeah, know what I mean? Agreed. There's no hair in sight from the nose up. And then we did this black. Yeah. Something's got to anchor the situation. There's yeah. quite a few problems with this, but yeah. they took a risk. All right, on to my number three, Leeton Meester. This is like, Ooky spooky spirit Halloween vampire costume yeah. picture on the bag. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All right. And if this, okay, let's talk about Whoa. it. The skin is nice. The blush is nice. The lip is nice. She is so pale. There is no, she needs to be warmed up here to some degree. A little bit of contour, a little uh-huh. bit of bronze or something, which yeah. that's what's giving it, making the eyeshadow even more jarring. And if I had a, photo in my wallet when I told people why I don't like cool tone eyeshadow I would whip this out like the FBI this photo because it looks like she hasn't slept and put (sighs) gold eyeshadow on to try and hide it because let me tell you people this is what I mean when I say cool tone eyeshadow especially on fair skin or mature skin I'm sure in the pan this was a beautiful lilac lavender tiptoe to through the tulips get it on the eye she's got two black eyes She looks like she has two black eyes. And it looks like as if she put gold on the lid to try and like mask it. The lip is such a success for me. The application of that lip is is flawless. Flawless. Look at the edges of that lip. And it's like if I cover the eyes, if you cover the eyes, I literally would have loved to see like. You could save the skin if the mm -hmm. eyes were different. Like if I was going to skin is gorgeous and I would just add bronzer. You could almost leave her that pale. Because remember oh, what was... Because uh, it matches her neck. Yeah. yeah. Remember Lily Collins at the Met Gala? She was almost like Snow White pale. Yeah, With the red lip and yes. the soft natural eye. Yes. Yes. And it was... She looked like a Disney, like the stepmother, but like... Be- like it was yeah. so beautiful. It's... The eyes are killing this. And... But again, another makeup jail for this artist. We did this much cool tone eyeshadow and paired it with a hot red orange lip and the gold and so the we're gold. doing gold and then a cool tone to matte yes. and then a a gorgeous orange red lip yeah. that like it's that orange based red so it's too many conflicting colors we're and it, also it's so we have too much going on cool tone skin cool tone blush cool tone eyeshadow warm gold eyeliner warm tone lip and then you notice something else we so, okay so we're committing the same crime as tyra with a bold eye and a bold lip with no lash and no brows. Yeah. Those brows are not touched. There no. is not, they, the makeup artist didn't even think about filling those brows. And God bless her, but she has sparse patches. So when you're going that heavy on the eye and you didn't, and you don't touch the brows. But a soft fill with an ash brown or it, a taupe. Just it exposes, s- it, 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 it brings your eye to the flaws in the brow when the yeah. eye is that bold. And yeah. it makes actually with no brow filling, it makes her forehead look more bare. Yes. And it just really exactly. does not. That's what I mean about the skin is not bad. You no. don't need to warm her up in this regard. Like but if seeing I seeing was... it go from uh, skin is soft and then bold lip and then soft skin through like the middle of her face and then bold eyes, bare brows and now bare skin. And I it know. just like it's so not complimentary to her her face shape and yes. also her skin tone and the tones. I mean, this is the magic of color theory because also mm-hmm. tell me when you're looking at this photo, your eye naturally is going to like almost see the opposite in a way when it's fighting in this manner. Mm. So when you're looking at her eyes, if you peripherally just kind of look at the forehead, the eyes, that cool cigarette ash <laughs> eye is making you see more yellow in her forehead. The contrast. Yeah. But then around her lips, because it's an orange red lipstick, it's bringing out the pink all on her chin and everything. And the the cheeks too, I feel So then almost like an optical illusion, Uh, it looks like she's going from orange to pink because of this weird optical illusion of doing a cool tone, all mm -hmm. of these warm and cool tones fighting one another. And the fast fix for me doing this, take out that cool tone shadow and just make it a warmer, warm. neutral color. And I have something. to say, other than the lack of 
applying brows, I would apply brows. The application of everything is not bad at all. No. Everything is done it's very well. It's the color choice. It's the color choices. We're, we're uh, jail. Yeah. yeah. So my number three, we have... Oh, no. We have... Um, oh, no. <laughs> We, oh no. We have Kesha. Now listen, I I did a look like this once on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I will say when you do this, um, A, here's my thing. Mm-hmm. When you're doing a when you're doing a blunt line makeup and you're going for very artistic scotch tape. tape. People stopped me when I had this on because people saw me in person when I had a look like this mm-hmm. and I did a galaxy faded up. Yeah. That line was n- could have cut, cut glass. Somebody. Yeah. That was no joke. I yeah. was not compromising on freehanding a line, yeah. which is hard. What we did here. Yes. Um, with a black Crayola crayon. And another thing, when you're doing black on the face like this, she better be matte. And it also better be too, because whatever this is, is like a goopy, glossy. Like a, you know what I mean? A satin shimmer black shadow Without a that doubt. we set over liquid foundation. Yes. And we probably put a five by seven card stock. To yes. Like, yes, yes, yes. So there was no fallout, which I think there is fallout <laughs> on the face. Yeah. Um, and here's my, so I'm going to go rattle what I need. Yeah, there's a lot of it. So when we're doing something like this, A, why do we have pencil thin brows as a last minute thought? No, you know what this is? Uh, 1920s. When, that's what they were trying. You know when in TV shows, when they have a drag queen, they never hire a drag queen to do the makeup. They so don't it's block some, out the brows. Exactly. Just it's like doing... some man or woman who's been working in the industry forever, Paul or Linda, who have never done drag makeup, Melissa McCarthy, and this is Melissa McCarthy in The Little Mermaid, They've ne- they don't know how to cover brows. So they just put foundation and concealer on them and then use Set it with a, eyeshadow. Yeah, and then use an eyeliner to draw on 1920s brows, Marlena Dietrich brows, and yes. you didn't cover the brow. No. How, if I were doing this, how I would fix it? A, break it down for you. Ready? Yeah. Real quick. Scotch tape first. Yep. Then we take cream bases. We are going to take a colored cream base mm-hmm. because at the time of doing this, I know damn well that the Makeup Forever flash palette was a thing. Mm-hmm. So you put a black base, then you would set with a black shadow, yep. and then for the gold, we would do a gold base. Or yes. I will even argue that you could probably just do foundation. Yes, You take a nice dense brush with a gold eyeshadow and set the rest of the face. Go up to the forehead and don't stop an inch away from her hairline where yeah. it looks like you ran out of like gold eyeshadow I or know. time. And you talk about order of operations. This takes so much practice to like learn stuff like this. But if I was doing this on her, first of all, mm-hmm. my very first step would be the eyebrows and the eyes, eyelids. Mm-hmm. It would be like I would put a base from where I hypothetically knew that black line was going to be. I would do foundation from there up, but I would do the eyes first. So I would uh, I would put a little gold on the eye. I would do the eyeliner. I would do the brows, cover the brows, put the brows on, etc. Then from here up, do the foundation. I wouldn't even put foundation from here down. Put the tape on, start your black, Oh, do your black up, yep, and then because then yeah. you're putting the gold on top of the foundation. So you need the foundation on the forehead. To give a base, And yeah. then to make it, you want to talk about really being crazy, once I had that black done, set, everything else, and you take that black off, then you are tracing that line with, with- foundation so it is Even cleaner and even sharper. Because you know what the other crime is? You can tell this black was done on top of all the base makeup. They didn't do it the other way around. They did her foundation and then just freehand black. And it looks like there is glitter fallout everywhere. And also, too, my argument of the brows, I would have almost preferred no nothing on the brows. Just have gold. Just have this black to gold artistic moment with beautiful lashes. Yes. And have it blend up where... This just looks like it was like, let's do something crazy and kooky. Yeah. But then we also went for foundation that looks like it's brushed across the lips. And then we highlight the Cupid's bow. The Cupid's bow. Not that I want anything on On the lips. lips, But I would have taken a little bit of this foundation off the center of the lips and done a crystal clear gloss on top of the lips. That's exactly what I would have done. Yeah. But to have the crystal clear gloss, that black needs to be... Matt. Matt. As the Dickens. <laughs> like, yeah. 
I don't know. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, girl. Matt is the Dickens. Matt is the Dickens. I can appreciate what we were going for with like, I guess like the golden tone in the hair and then the black outfit and then the nails with the gold and the black. I mm-hmm. get it. I know. And I get it. Like, listen too. And in, in the makeup artist defense, they might not have had scotch tape. So they were like, we want to do this. So we got to roll with it because I get it. Like maybe they were doing her makeup for this event and like, Oh shit, we don't have scotch tape, nor do I have time. We got to make it work. That's where the, the travesty is. You should, they should have done that before her base makeup. So you could have free yeah. hand then taken the foundation and cleaned up your mistakes underneath, carved Good that point. out. And my other problem with this is when you're doing a black look like this, because what is this? Is this a strip of black across that black should be ombre up. up. That black should be fading away. There's an under the eye on the inner corner. It and then just, we're doing it across the, the bridge nose, and then nothing it barely, else. barely fades like a, a half an inch. But then on the cube, uh, on the center of the eyes here and here, it's just bluntly stopped. Like there's no ombre and then, blending. But then it goes gold to then all of a sudden skin tone in this abrupt way where That's it looks like I mean. she had a headband on and then took it off. <sighs> Kevin. I'm going to punch you in the throat. It, I, the whole time I was thinking that that's exactly the description. It looks like the foundation was patchily like taken off her forehead. She had a headband on to keep it out of her face, but it was touching her forehead. <laughs> yes. So Which, you, when you it. are doing such editorial makeup like this, the skin needs to be and flawless. even Yeah. And like from what we can see on the cheek, I see what is fallout. Yeah. This is like so peak 2009 though, because of Gaga, everybody else was like, we need to be crazy, but they didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it almost like had to create a whole new generation of makeup artists that were trying to be as daring as she was. Don't. But exactly. That's what I mean. You got to test run that girl. You got to test run that behind closed doors before you, we can't just say we should do this thing. I've never done before for the Grammys. This is where it's going to get crazy. I feel it. I feel like it's going to get nuts. Open your eyes, girl. My number two. Lady Gaga. I feel like we are going to have a lot to say, not only about this situation, but Lady Gaga's makeup as a whole and the genealogy of that ride. This is Lady Gaga in her aqua wig era, clearly born this way. 2011, 2012. Yep. Let's start top to bottom. Shall we? Oh my God. All right. Buckle up. So the brows? Horrible. Why? Yes. Like the sperm eyebrows. Yeah. The sperm brow. Yeah. That's what I call that. Hey, that was a thing for a while. I know. Okay. So here's one thing too that I always like to point out to people that always blows my mind. I always tell people tilt your chin up and look in the mirror and look where your brows start. Yes. So if you look at her brows, why is one coming down further (laughs) than the other? Yeah. We're already asymmetrical. And if you are going to be as unapologetic to make the insides of those brows as sharp and 90 degree angled, why is one of them starting farther over? When you're ombreing a brow, that's harder because you have to be super light handed. But apparently we were just using a square stencil. We so, were using Anastasia Dip Brown. She said, line. <laughs> At the very yeah. least, yeah. they should be centered. Oh my gosh. Go from, and the rule of thumb, go from the edge of the nose and poke it up and then start there. Edge of the nose, poke it up. And that's, if that's what your starting point is, fierce more power to you. I know. So the brows, I mean, need, need we say more? Yeah. Now for the cut crease liner, graphic liner. Oh my God. Enthusiast of graphic liner. I love graphic liner. You're great at graphic liner. I love graphic liner. Yes. Now, it's a choice to clearly do this with a pencil. Pencil. Your, spooky, spooky, fucking rounded pencil your that you haven't sharpened. Your pencil in the back of her vanity that she hasn't yeah. sharpened since 1965. She said, that's original Revlon. Literally. Yeah. This is um, Helena Rubinstein pencil. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, unsharpened. Unsharpened, boot nasty. And this is what really gets me about this liner is that you could tell shaky hand had too much caffeine. And then we said, let's clean it up with silver glitter. Yeah. And we did. And we, because if you, we look side to side, you could tell this line is so thick on one eye. <laughs> yeah. Because she was either standing on the side of her doing it or looking in the front of her. And this is where, you, girl, you got to step back and look at that makeup. Yeah. yeah. But, and I get it. Well, and 
even too, now we've heard that uh, this about Miss Gaga is that she doesn't like to sit in that makeup chair too long. Miss Gaga doesn't like to well, sit there. Well, then we need to reevaluate our expectations. Because <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah, because, and Miss Gaga likes a graphic liner and she likes a graphic liner moment and a wing liner at that. But if we don't have the time for this and we're going on the red carpet. Yeah. And we're yeah. doing ooky spooky gaga. If you notice the left's eye, the silver glitter goes farther. Than it that. goes on about 65% of the lid. And on the other side, it goes to about 45% of the lid. Yeah. So we don't even have that. Uh-huh. And on, you could tell we started with the left eye. Because the line perfect. is smaller. So we started the pencil there. And then when we went to the other eye, we didn't sharpen it. So it was bigger as yeah. we went to the other eye oh. and drew that on. Yeah. She didn't oh, sharpen yeah. in between doing the eyes. What do you always say? Broke, bu- uh, bruised, battered, and bankrupt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. What, what is that from? Is that I from J.G. No Wentworth? Are you bruised, no. battered, and bankrupt? Yeah. No, that is not from J.G. Wentworth. No. <laughs> but, you, I've only ever heard it's you from say a, that. It's from a commercial. It's from a com- Comment below. What is bruised, battered, and bankrupt from? It's from like a J.G. Wentworth-esque type Esque thing. commercial. Oh, maybe, yeah. Are you bruised, battered, and bankrupt? Even if your credit's wrecked, ruined, bruised, battered, or bankrupt and then three in the morning it's like ab- abnormally loud yes yeah, yeah. what's a commercial of like the the weightlifting my husband said look at you <laughs> no i've never seen that <laughs> no <laughs> my husband said look at you you lost weight oh no yeah. no i've never seen that no i love the commercials oh. that come on at four in the morning four in the morning yeah and they're and it's like loud sunlight. yeah they're abnormally loud and awful quality have you been a victim of vaginal mesh <laughs> like yeah like those things <laughs> Growing up in our generation, when you'd fall asleep with the TV on, the the best of the best CD collections infomercial would come on, and it'd be like Celine Dion and Michael Bolton, but they stitch it with the kid from Monsters, Inc., who he's in. <laughs> in bed. We and he's waking up in bed. And he's, like, buck, and he's going, at, he's like, the eyes open, just looking. I posted the other day with the George Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to bring up, because that... Happened to me so much. The, oh my. my. And there was something God. skeezy about that yeah. song. Like, and all jumping on a jumping trampoline, on trampoline and then just coming up slow motion and then disappear. Yes. And, 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 and the kid being And like, the angry grandma was like, Yes. Oh my God. Oh wow. Oh so, my gosh. What were we talking about? I don't even know. But how back did we to get this. here? Okay, back to Lady Gaga. So I also pulled up two because I want to say what blow and Kevin and I have had so many theories about Gaga's makeup because there are times that Gaga's makeup is so stunning. And then there's times like this where it looks like she let her niece grab or every crayon in the box and just go to town. Do you think, I think it's a timing issue. And I also think to stabi- think stability wise, she's always getting her hair and makeup done at the same time. When I'm doing intricate cut crease graphic liner makeup, I don't want you pulling the hair or like adjusting or, mm-hmm. or, or trying to brush her hair because think about it when I'm, you, we talked about this when you're yeah. doing something, you are resting your hand and like doing this. And but, I'm the shakiest person alive. And I can't have somebody disturbing my piece if I'm doing (laughs) yeah I can't have somebody disturbing my piece if I'm trying to do namaste crease work yeah Yeah. I I need everybody to light a candle and let's keep it quiet but see there's just too many things about this that I understand like yes it could be like a rush issue whatever the case is but if you're Lady Gaga's makeup artist and you know she's going to ask you to paint the Mona Lisa on her face and you're going to have five minutes and there's going to be like someone like you know hitting her in the head with a baseball bat I would like come up with a I would come up with like tricks to get the same look while adapting the Mm -hmm. time in a way. And B, uh, there's things about this to me that I that scream. It wasn't maybe a rush issue because there's intentional choices made those brows. That was a choice. You well, know what and, I mean? And if, yeah, because like you're saying too, that actually opens up this conversation more to you had the time because not only did you do graphic liner, you did a wing liner and added this underneath liner and then did the lip and then did the mole and then did the brows and then did all that. We've seen videos sometimes with her makeup artist and her where they're like demoing something and they have the time and she'll just grab a pencil and just all done. But I know for a fact that Val Garland did the the photo shoot for the um, Born This Way album mm. with her and that like it yes, heavily yes, yes. edited album. But, but still. that big liner yes. and everything was clean, crisp, cut, and of course edited. Yes. But 
uh, Val Garland has done her makeup and um, Billy B. Mm-hmm. Remember him? Yes. He did her makeup for the VMAs when she was wearing the meat dress. That was very oh, like subdued wow. makeup, yeah. but very gorgeous. Yes. So, because yeah. that's the thing about Gaga. Like her makeup just totally changes mm-hmm. her face. Like I pulled this one up too because it's like those are not the same people. And, and look at the difference wait. of still being. I think this is Billy B. It, that's what I mean. It's just like to still yeah. be bold and yeah. different and artistic but look at the brows now these brows i'm not mad harsh, at, at all but they're harsh obviously but they're it's clean. supposed to be artistic yeah we're not going for like uh elizabeth this reminds me Olsen of like on the red carpet andy warhol That's inspired I mean. like very but do you see the difference of like just the, the balance you know what i mean yeah. like from the from the nose down this is the exact same makeup but then to if you're going to do brows like that, A, this needs to be the brow shape. I don't know what those sperm eyebrows were. Like that was a tr- that was an intentional choice by whoever did that. And to yeah. balance it out with these natural soft eyes with this it's just the application this of this was is a so stunning, much better. Stunning stunning like, look. I know. Yeah. To ba- and the way the eyes with that that like you always say a little bronzerish kind of yeah. a tan in the crease with the pop of that lightness on the inside the liner just on the outside half even to have such a, a small lash if any with this what an achievement. All right, we're on to Kevin's number two. So number two, all right, we have Nicole Kidman. Oh, Jesus H. Oh, my God. She looked like she did a little kokiana yeah, in the bathroom. Gonna say, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. She yeah. did a little kokiana in the bathroom. Welcome back to a new segment, Flashback or Blow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so I'm going to argue this is not Flashback. This is excess powder that you didn't brush off. Yeah. Because you I was can thinking. see this. You, it's not it's, white under eyes. Like, oopsie, use too yeah. much setting powder. Yeah. That wasn't like camera ready. This was excessive powder that was put on and someone said, Nicole, get up. We got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the makeup artist was running after her to yeah. try to dust it well, off. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> like spitting in her face, hoping it's a windy day outside. Yes, one hu- on yes, this red yes, carpet. Yes. Yeah. So I also I have an um, issue with this too. Mm-hmm. Is that do we not use like setting sprays on on famous people? Because if yeah. you think even a wet setting spray would almost like wet this powder down, <laughs> melt a little, it all. Yeah. yeah, no. But really yeah, though, that yeah. was my first thought. I'm like, do we just not use something wet to set her? Did we just use loose setting powder? That was the last step. Yeah, loose setting powder. Yeah, yeah. And let her go. God. Do you also see how the blush doesn't even connect to like the temple and the ear it's almost sweep too quickly up and then disappears yeah so honestly this is proof too with the way that setting powder looks the setting powder was done after the blush yes what are you doing and under the eyes once my wet concealer is set with translucent powder unless i'm doing such and especially on a look like this this is like natural nancy over here you know what i mean it's not like they were carving out a nose contour with loose powder why is all that powder on her nose on her nose like no to eye... avoid shine maybe to absorb maybe but maybe here... this was a touch-up problem maybe they tried to touch her up oh they might have they, that might be it they might have gone back like let's say you know right before she got out of the car oh. they did one more powder to do like loose powder just to Who absorb touches up with loose powder well you can, you can, but as but an artist, to keep, uh, like, loose. grab the, the what is it, the Rimmel um, Stay Matte Powder, pressed powder, that's your touch-up powder. And also, too, how does nobody see the... I'm not, this is not a flashback issue. Mm -mm. This is excessive powder sitting on the face that you could see with the naked eye. Yes. This isn't a camera quality thing where it picked up on it. This is, you let her walk out looking like a fool. Undone. The other thing that makes me also exactly question that this is not a flashback issue is where's the flashback on the rest of her face? You know what I mean? So we used a different powder on the face. I don't think so because it's on her nose right. so i highly doubt this makeup artist has a has an an under eye nose powder and then a rest of the face powder so this is literally just too much powder built up on the skin and and for a woman of her age why is there why that much powder even, why are we using that much powder we don't need that much and also too let's put the powder aside the rest of the makeup is not successful to me it's not great heartbreak feels good in a place like this <laughs> Yes, and we are heartbroken because, and another thing I will say too, that Nicole Kidman in this photo, 
as a woman of a certain age, gorgeous. that powder is not finely milled enough. And like that she powder is so is gorgeous. Chunky, funky. That powder. Do you know what powder that is? Laura Mercier. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! yeah! Yeah, brother. That powder yeah, is not yes, finely milled is. enough. Look a at powder, that. Powder powders I use on mature skin. It's not even thick enough to not, do that. To sit like that. The right. powders I use on mature skin are so finely milled, it's like using smoke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. It literally is- Secret brightening Laura Mercier. That's what I mean. It's it's right. literally like once when I dip in, it's 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 it's, it's evaporating yeah. as I'm using it. You open it. the jar and you're like, need a new <laughs> it's jar. <gone>. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, it's just, yeah. Come back. It's just, it's raptured the minute I open it. It's like, giving inside out when he's fading away. Yes. <laughs> Stop. Don't make me cry. How dare they use that heavy of a powder on her? Don't let her forget me. Mm. Yeah. What are you doing to me? <laughs> but yeah, like I honestly, and she's so gorgeous. And know. you know what's really sick too? And I actually, because when I saw this photo, this I hair thought is about. spectacular. But anyway. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, that the person that did her hair wanted to repost this photo. I was and pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this hairstylist was like, you motherfucker. You yeah. fucking boot nasty yeah, whore. This poor hairstylist. No, and like the hair is so They only posted gorgeous. a picture of the back and they were like, I swear it's Nicole Kidman. Yeah. yeah. I can't prove it, <laughs> but I swear it's Nicole Kidman because this makeup artist you can't ruined put that hairstylist photo. photo. I know, poor thing. And you know what? I even have to say though, how embarrassing for Mortified. the makeup artist. Yeah, so that's what I mean. The powder obviously is a big, 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 big problem, but yeah. there's other problems with this. Oh, yeah. 100%. And yeah, there was many a angles. <laughs> many a angle. Uh-oh. Many an a ang- angle. An angle. <gasps> Let that sink in. This poor thing. Let that sink in. Oh my God. And she has no idea. She's blissfully unaware. <laughs> she is smiling. Yeah. She's blissfully unaware. She saw these photos and she said, death! To all, <laughs> to of, all them. of them. Yeah. This horrible. So much powder. It's disgusting. On her. I would never use that much powder no, on her. No, and honestly, truly, and how, what would we do to fix it? A, setting spray. Um, and if this was a touch up issue, what? I'm talking pressed powder, finely milled, dusting the brush with a powder and rolling it under the eye, finger, blend out any creases, and then press it again with powder. Um, why why is it we were using. Around the nostril. No. <laughs> Unless she, unless, you know what, you know what this was? Mm. She was doing blow and sneezed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, I'm ready. Yeah, Put yeah. me out there. Yes. Yeah. Oh my oh God. My no, God. it's really, it's, yeah. I, I can't even, you know, when these photos came out, she was not thrilled. Not happy. No. Yeah. Isn't this fun isn't this fun we're having fun we're having fun <laughs> we're all gonna show up and we're all gonna have fun <laughs> who is that abby miller you've oh, never seen Tim yes Bud? i've never watched I it I but messed she's... Up the quote. what was it we're all gonna she was unhinged when she tried to bite that woman's finger she goes you would eat it you <laughs> fat bitch <laughs> you would try and eat my finger you fat bitch i was like yo these people are crazy Oh my God. But you know what I came across the other day too? I almost said it was an old clip of Kate Gosselin and John Gosselin. Uh And when they're giving an interview and she's sitting there and she's like, the biggest thing, could you stop breathing so loudly, honey? And the way she says honey afterwards, like, could you stop breathing so loudly, honey? Oh, he hated his life. But then she goes, she's like, so breathing so loud, honey? He's like, (laughs) breathe quieter. Like, when, the Sybil. original Karen. Sybil. Like the multiple personality. Yeah. Like yeah. I, yeah. she was, yeah, invented Karen. No, oh my God. That's, I feel like that's where the, the, the term comes from because of the haircut, the haircut. and everything. Yeah. It was everything that she was the OG Karen. Yeah. Oh my God. my God. All right. On that note, we are to number one. <gasps> I almost picked this photo. I almost picked yeah. this as, this is your number one. First of all, we were living in a time, people knock Ariana Grande for doing blackface. Christina invented. She's like, OG. Yes. At least Christina Aguilera is Latina. So, is she really? What's her last name? Aguilera. That doesn't sound. I never assumed. Like I don't know. Yeah. I never really thought about what. She... Yeah, because she, she sh- was. biologically is about nine shades lighter than this. Yeah, yeah. No, I no, guess I never like... even like. I, yeah. I guess I. Oh, she has wow. like seven albums in Spanish. What? Yeah. Okay, I live under a rock. <laughs> yeah. So 
way too tan. Look at the neck though, self tanned. And I will give credit. The ears are the same color. We painted the ears. Yes. You know what? I'm going to say something. I am too. Now that I'm looking at this, it's aggressive, but, but the application is done well. You know what? I will. I'm you know why things. I think I was just jarred by the brows. Thank you. That, yeah. I was going to say. And also, do you see where she's at? The red carpet for? Yes. Yeah, so it was definitely Mac Glam, Viva Glam launch. So we were going very over the top. Over the top, old school Mac. And I got to say, application wise, this like perfectly blended pink to skin tone. You know what? I'm gooped and gagged. Listen, everybody. I don't know why this was my number one when I was uh, looking. Okay. The brows are criminal. The brows enough. are arrested. And do you yeah, know it what was very though? much the time. Controversial yet brave. You know what I would do? It wouldn't have made sense in the time. Mm-hmm. I would go no brow. And oh, go okay. like, go no, br- because clearly she has no brows. Yes. So I would have done. No, you know I what I would have did? No, I would have You know what I would have did? I would have covered the brows and I would have did diamond brows. I would have done rhinestones. Ooh, or you know what? Gaga I didn't look too? like that. The whole brow was rhinestones, especially they, that you're a Mac Viva Glam. And they didn't have these back then, but I would have done like the brow tattoos. Yes. So it looks like hair. Just, yes. And not filled it in further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like texture of hair. But yes. going back to the time period, I would have said like at this moment, yeah, when this launched, I get that the thin brows were probably a thing. Yeah, but I got to say, like, the blush placement, too, on, like, the forehead and everything wrapped around this pink. I, I want to know, know this who did this. This is kind of a serve. I I'm, don't know why this is my number one. This is kind of a serve. I know, I know. The longer I'm looking at it. Yeah. The the the, the tone is a problem. The whole orange tone yeah. is what is my, this is, if this makeup. But the application of the makeup yes, is perfect. But if this was on her real skin tone or even two shades darker than her biological skin tone. Mm. It'd be one thing, but it's just, it is so, She's so orange. It is overshadowing the entire And makeup. I think too, if she had this level of pink on her tone, mm-hmm. we would have had to go with a different shade of pink mm-hmm. because I feel like it would have been too fuchsia on her where yeah. it would have been like a little too like, whoa. But I think yeah. for the tone of her skin, eye color, everything looks beautiful. But you know what though? I'm going to say... That be- I think the eyeshadow and lip and blush choice are so perfect that it is they are cool tone mm-hmm. that I think the how orange yellow oompa loompa her skin is is doing no justice obviously so if you actually did dial down and went with her natural more fair complexion mm. all of the same shades would have worked because she is more cool tone in real life and you know what though i can't even fault the makeup artist for this because i she bet you showed up like this i bet you she showed up <laughs> she showed up with that neck up, she, you know what i mean well, tanned up to the chin you, she probably did show up because hello yeah. tanning beds and everything was, you know she back showed then, up and this was spray tan probably right like that S- orange spray tan spray tan or bed tan and she and had then the little tan. playboy bunny sticker on the hip like all the girls did back then yeah I, I went to high school with somebody and he literally was like i talk about like deflecting yeah when i was like i was afraid of getting made fun of and people always went after him instead of me mm-hmm. and i was like oh my god like i want to be as fearless as he was because he had the playboy bunny. and he was like and what bitch yeah. and i was like i love him i know like I yeah. want to be like him. This was the time. That was the time. And you know what? Honestly, this makeup is a serve. I kind of want to recreate this look. <laughs> and, but Okay, I will say too, the only, my fault with it too, with those brows, those super thin brows, you're obviously going for like a 1920s. Again, we're going for that like 20s Marlene Dietrich brow. Yeah. Raise them up. That was the whole point of doing that back then. You know what I mean? They shaved their eyebrows off so they could have them higher to have that big, doe-eyed, like yeah. big space. I really, yeah. The more so, I look yeah. At this. this is so funny that this is my number one because it's really not as bad as any well, of the and others. That's the thing. I almost put this in, but I was like, I think I like it too much to put it in. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, and you, what we were talking about with Kesha, that pink taped clean she taped there's no way this was done with like anything that wasn't taped to her face because it's too perfect it's too perfect and everything is blended to perfection where it's you need the you need the room to have something guiding that line because if you had a card there you can't get as clean yeah. of a like a yep. it's all too perfect i want to know who did this because it's beautiful i love it okay well oops <laughs> hey no i, I know are, i know brows are a choice yeah. kevin's number one take a look 
Kevin, I forgot about this. Give people context. When the hell was this and why did this happen? And who hurt her? <laughs> like, Do you want to know what's scary? This wasn't that long ago. This is when Chromatica launched. Chromatica launched. Chromatica dropped in 2020. This was in Las Vegas. And this is during her Enigma show. So she was doing Chromatica stuff. So this is in the past three years of one well, Halloween. Decided to go out that night and got her makeup done by her artist and did Halloween makeup to look like a unicorn. Corn. Now, I have an issue because... An issue? I have 50 questions. So right off the bat, we're yeah. going for an illusion here, right? To look like you have a unicorn eye that's yeah. large because yeah. there would be no other reason why you have a 301 lash on the top of your fucking eyebrow. Yeah. yeah. Is there? Yeah. If we are going for an illusion, and I have another reference photo to show this, yeah. that from far away... The illusion would be that your eyes look large and it is a full eye moment. Like it's a, it's supposed to look like an illusion of an eye. Was the illusion supposed to be that when her eyes are closed, which I think that was supposed to be the illusion, when her eyes are closed, it's supposed to look like her eyes are open when her biological eyes are closed. So why is the entire lid pink? And why is the white only on under the brow? Her, uh, I on don't her brow, even understand. Under the eye. Do you know what I think this was? Is that she was dressing up like a unicorn. And we started with the eye. So if you look at just the pink alone and the top lid, it looked like we were doing like a graphic liner where it was a wing liner drawn into graphic with yeah. pink. And then somewhere along the line, someone said, you should do like that a thing full- I saw on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. And we lost control. We we lost the plot. Because then what is the what is the white eyebrow? I don't Where know. Where is that supposed to look like it's part of I the... Don't, like, this is like tripping me out because I don't understand what biology they were going so for. So can I, I... So now I'm going to pull up the other reference photo where her eyes are open. Okay. Where is this supposed to... No. Yeah. We did not understand. She did not understand the assignment at all. Let this speak volumes of how difficult special effects makeup is because this is a professional makeup artist and this is what they did. Now, because look at her eye. Why is it the black even underneath? Match. That needs to be whited out. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand. This should not be the way that it is. They were going for the like Bratz doll thing, but they did not understand how to do this at all. Like I did something similar with this with the Corpse Bride thing. Mm. And when I tell you, you need to like white out all the way around your eye. You did do that. Oh, I love shit like this. I could do this in my sleep. Did you block out your brows for the Corpse Bride? I don't think so because her brows pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, are where the brow shape is, oh, but and it just, just curves up it curves and then up and goes. Like, yeah. So it was yeah. a long, her brows aren't raised anymore. Cause I remember that makeup look being so, and it's all about placement too. And this is where this makeup look isn't successful with the pink that we, it's just this garage door pink. And then they added yeah. all the rhinestones on the liner. Yeah. Like, like And even if that's what I mean about it. So for me, if you're not going to block out the brow so that you have the real estate to bring the eye, the illusion higher, you need to bring the illusion lower. So since I didn't want to block out the brows and I knew I could make it look with this look, I wasn't going for I want her to be the cartoon version. I wanted this makeup look to be if she came to life and was a human being, what would she look like? So you're kind of drawing on the human facial features. I... When I tell you the amount of white you need to put on the waterline, pack on, set with a white powder, sugar pill white eyeshadow, you bring it lower. Yeah. Like, because I also wanted to have to see the top of the lids. I wanted to, which this is what I would have done with her. If she had pre-existing makeup on or pink eyeshadow yeah. on or whatever, do a gorgeous pink eyeshadow look and bring the illusion down. We don't understand the anatomy of special. You know what I mean? So you have to, also too, we have a top lash. We have a lash on the real lash, and then we have a <laughs> we bottom have three lash. three lashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I remember when this came out and you text this to me. Because we always, every now and again, when yeah. she has one of these things, Unhinged. we text it to each other. Just like, God, all of it is out of sadness of like what we would do to be able to do her makeup. And I don't want to do her makeup in 20 minutes. Don't no, do that to no. me. No, And that might be the thing, too. I think Gaga may ask too much of her people and not give them enough time. No, I 1000% feel like that's the case because this looks rushed. Which if you're okay with that, whatever. But like you also have to understand like that's the makeup artist's reputation. But then behind the scenes, it's probably her giving them five minutes. That's not fair to do to your makeup artist. No, no. 
Alrighty, guys, that is it for a brand new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. Let us know if you want us to do top five best celebrity Ooh, like yeah. triumphs. We almost added that into this episode, but we that's going to take more research. Because there's is. so many breathtaking moments. Oh, it, I yeah. really need to put thought into it. So Me too. There's that, been so many over the years. Which, because we could talk about, oh my God, we would goon out of the blending. and the, I get turned on. You're the same. I'm thinking... I already have it in I know, mind. I have some in my head. There's and it literally gets like, me yeah. like a flutter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for listening and watching wherever you guys are. Make sure to subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Leave us a little five-star review. Also subscribe on the YouTube channel for your video episode one day early on Sundays. Wherever you are, we hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, you are beautiful. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.